over the middle. Touchdown, Louisiana. I'm head coach Billy Napier, and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. Coming up on Inside Louisiana Football, Coach Napier looks back at the Alabama game and ahead to Texas State in the sit-down. We'll introduce you to men's tennis's Elio Lago. We'll take you to campus for the anti-hazing awareness event. And of course, we give you another behind the scenes look at the culture. It was all smiles during pregame warmups at Bryant-Denny Stadium as head coach Billy Napier enjoyed a homecoming of sorts, catching up with friends and former co-workers of the Alabama staff. Louisiana facing the top ranked Crimson Tide for the first time in 28 years. And it was the first time the Raging Cajuns had ever faced the number one team in the country. Unfortunately, those smiles disappeared shortly after kickoff when the Crimson Tide marched down the field on an eight-play, 72-yard drive, ending with this John Jacobs nine-yard touchdown run, and it was 7-0 Alabama. A block punt set up the Crimson Tide on the Cajuns' 14-yard line for drive number two, and two plays later, Tua Tagaviola hits Henry Ruggs III from 13 yards out, and it was 14-0 Tide. Louisiana goes three and out and punts to Bama and the dangerous return man Jalen Waddell picks up some blocks and he is off down the sideline and 63 yards later he is in for the score and Alabama had a 21-0 lead midway through the first quarter. Second quarter now the Crimson Tide continue to show why they're the number one team in the country. Jalen Hurts now in at quarterback and he finds Ruggs on the slant and Ruggs goes 54 yards for his second score of the day, and it was 35-0. Fast forward to the fourth quarter now, and the Raging Cajuns continue to fight. Trey Regas muscles his way in to finish the six-play 78-yard drive with a one-yard touchdown run. Next to Louisiana possession, Regas, Mitchell, and Raymond Calais all contributing to the ground game on an 11-play 80-yard touchdown drive. Andre Nunez finds Jamarcus Bradley on a nice pitch and catch from 18 yards out. Louisiana outscores Alabama 14-0 in the fourth quarter, but fall to the Crimson Tide 56-14. Trey Regas finishes the game with 111 rushing yards, becoming the first 100-yard rusher versus Alabama since last year's Iron Bowl with Auburn. And Elijah Mitchell adds 85 yards on the ground. Junior linebacker Jacques Boudreau led the way on defense with seven tackles, while sophomore Chauncey Manac and freshman Chris Moncrief added six tackles each. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football, the sit-down with head coach Billy Napier. Every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, Manger. If you're happy and you know it, Manger. If you're happy and you know it, nothing that will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it, Manger. It's time for the sit-down brought to you by Sonic, home of the Raging Cajun Cheeseburger. This is how we Sonic. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Football. Time once again for the sit-down with head coach Billy Napier. And coach, let's go back to Saturday morning at Bryant Denny. Uh, just give me your overall thoughts of, of that day. Well, obviously it didn't go quite like we wanted it to. We'd like the game to be much more competitive. 
Uh, but I do think a lot of the credit goes to Alabama and the, the football team that they've put together uh, and certainly the level that they're playing at. You know, I think it's pretty evident why they're the number one team in the country. Before we get to any highlights or any, any game action, let's talk about pregame because it was a reunion of sorts. I mean, you were a popular guy on the field that day. Well, a lot of familiar faces, you know. Certainly uh, when you're in the trenches with those people over there working and grinding away for a number of years, you develop close bonds. You know, lots of great friends there. Certainly um, appreciated my time there and really – uh, it was good to be back, good to see those people, and it reminds you of a lot of things that we were able to accomplish there and really how we did it, you know, which was, I thought, one of the positives from the weekend was that it reminded me of how hard it was to accomplish what we accomplished there. Right. Let's get to the game now. Um, whenever you're playing a team the caliber of Alabama, you want to get off to a, a great start, and obviously that did not happen. Uh, they take the ball in their opening drive right down the field, pretty methodical, and uh, put seven on the board. And then they get the block punt, which set them up for another short field and another touchdown. And then they get the, uh, the uh, punt return for the touchdown. So just talk about that sequence of events and, and what was going through your mind at that point. Well, the special teams miscues created momentum for them. You know, certainly two, two basic um, miscues on our part. You know, poor technique, poor footwork in the shield on the punt um, led to the block punt. Absolutely 100% our control. And then we miss a tackle on the punt return. In my opinion, that was the one play on the film where I didn't feel like the effort was up to par. You know, they're dynamic on special teams because of the returner. Uh, but I really believe that those miscues were in our control and we could have played better there. So you get to halftime, it's 49 to nothing. Uh, and a term that I heard in the locker room was, so what, now what? And I guess, in other words, it's, we can't even control what just happened, but we can control what happens in the second half. You know, and I think our staff did a good job kind of rallying the troops there, and we played with great effort and toughness in the second half and really finished the game in the fourth quarter the way you'd want your football team to do that. Uh, won the fourth quarter, which is one of our objectives. Uh, and you could see that when they put their twos in there and we executed, we had success. So we got some stops. We produced a couple of touchdowns. Uh, we were able to rush the ball effectively. Um, and, we, you know, I think that we can build off of that. There's a little bit of momentum and confidence that comes with that. Uh, and I think I kind of saw that a little bit in our team on Sunday. Yeah, you outscored Alabama 14 nothing in the fourth quarter. I doubt many teams are going to do that uh, from here on out for the rest of the year. Uh, Trey Regis gets in the end zone. Jamarcus Bradley with a touchdown catch. Just talk about uh, that accomplishment and being able to say you did that against them. Well, I, I think I'm proud of our offensive line and how they played in the game. I thought we held our own. Um, obviously, it didn't lead to the production in terms of points and the score. But I think we, we made progress as a unit there. I think we rushed the ball effectively, and I think that that's something that we can really create some confidence for our football team going forward on offense in particular. Now, one of the things I wanted to bring up with you uh, is, is effort and and passion and desire because those are things that really don't show up in statistics or mm -hmm. on the scoreboard but one example for instance was Ashton Johnson on a punt coverage he was the first guy down the field as he usually is mm -hmm. uh, and, and he did miss the tackle on the uh, punt returner in fact he missed two more after that <laughs> but on the fourth try he brought yeah. the guy down and it just speaks to some of the things that are going on in the field that you typically don't see in statistics yeah we're not we're not getting the outcome that we want right now um, you know, relative to the score, but I, th I do think we're establishing some intangibles, some expectations from how we want our team to play. Um, and I think we can fix some of the issues that we have. Uh, we do have some limitations, but I'm going to tell you, this group plays hard. Uh, they've stayed together through some of the difficult adversity that we face, and we continue to show that we've developed some mental toughness in, on, in the offseason program, uh, and it's paying dividends as we go forward. So you faced Mississippi State and now Alabama, two quality SEC West teams. How do you see that benefiting this group as the season progresses? Well, we, we played four games. I think it's going to, um, you know, one opponent I felt like we should beat. Um, and then the other was a conference game that, you know, Coastal's proved that they have a, a quality football team that we didn't quite get it done. Mm -hmm. um, and then the SEC West teams, 
obviously have really good veteran football teams this year. But we've got four games under our belt. I think our entire organization is getting better weekly at what the expectation is. I think we've got a pulse on what type of football team we have. And I'm looking forward to the next eight weeks as we play group of five football here in the Sun Belt Conference and you know, challenging our guys to really uh, make improvement each week as we go forward and let's continue to have those intangibles that we've emphasized. Let's talk about the next one on the slate, Texas State. Um, it's a matchup of one in three teams, both teams right. very hungry. Uh, tell me what you see out of those guys. Well, Texas State is in their second year. They've, they've certainly improved from year one to year two. Uh, they, they are having, they've played several quarterbacks during the season. Um, they like to take shots down the field. They like to attack the field vertically. Uh, they do rush the ball. I think on special teams, they're very aggressive in their approach, uh, especially their cover units. And I think defensively, they've got an identity. There's certainly, you can see that they're playing harder than they did last year. And they're working better together in terms of how their offense and defense complement each other. So they're in a similar situation to us. You know, they're hungry for a win uh, and anxious to get back out there for that opportunity. You mentioned the several quarterbacks. They're led by uh, Willie Jones III. He leads them in pass attempts, but he also leads them in rushing attempts and yards gained. So uh, tell me what you see in that guy. Well, you know, he got injured uh, recently, left shoulder injury. Uh, they put their back up in the game and then quickly took him out and put a true freshman in who really stabilized them and played halfway decent against UTSA. So uh, I think they're injury a little bit of you know indecision in terms of who's the two who's the three so uh, i'm anxious to see where they're at from an injury standpoint as we go throughout this week and which quarterback they play when we show up and play saturday all right coach thanks for the time as always cajuns in texas state espn plus from san marcos at six o'clock this saturday coming up next on inside louisiana football we'll introduce you to men's tennis's elio lago and we'll take you to campus for the anti-hazing awareness event to perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. If you're happy and you know it, nothing that will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. Mange, I'm head coach Billy Napier, and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan McDonald. We're at Sonic, America's drive-in, and we're with Elio Lago, a member of the Raging Cajun tennis team. Uh, Elio, how has your season gone so far? Well, uh, we right now we're playing the individual tournaments. Uh, we had the Cajun Classic, the really big tournament we do here at UL. Uh, I played the draw. I won the first match. It was a pretty decent match. Uh, I, I mean, played. that was a big win for you. You beat a nationally ranked player in that first. Yeah, round. it was. It was the first time. I was really excited to like be able to do this at UL. Uh, the guy I think was from LSU. Uh, that was a tough match. The, the weather was really hot, really humid. So in the second set, I had to fight a little bit, a little bit more. But it was a really, really nice experience. So so far, that's that's how it's going. Tell me about your hometown, Fortaleza, Brazil. So it's uh, up north in Brazil. It's really similar to Louisiana. Uh, the food we go kind of to the similar way. We like to eat a lot of fish. It's uh, it's in the coast. So we have all this culture to go to the beach and the Sundays, and it's pretty similar to Louisiana. We have carnival and all this stuff. 
What was it that attracted you to the university here and to the tennis program? Uh, Mark, my coach, was the main thing. Uh, when he recruited me, he, he made me feel like I would be part of a, a big family. The community here too. Uh, the guy that was helping me to like choose the schools, he, he showed me how Louisiana is, how like Lafayette, Acadiana is, and uh, I really liked like the atmosphere, the, the community. You came here actually uh, in the middle of the term and so forth. How was that transition for you? The beginning was a little bit hard, especially because of the language. I had to, to learn English kind of like in a hurry to like do tests and stuff like this to get the enough score to come to UL. But I mean, my teammates and my coach, they helped me a lot. Uh, the academic advisors, they helped me a lot. So it was a little bit tough, but not that super hard. Your English is very, very good, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have, you talked about your team. There are players from like six different countries on your team. How great is that to have that sort of experience and to meet people from different cultures, different backgrounds? Um, I personally like uh, we we have this uh, we have the chance to like meet guys and and see how the culture in other countries are and learn how each guy play they they kind of match. So like we have three Australians now they play really good doubles so they could like help me with these things. You talked about similar background and so forth, food being a lot similar, so crawfish didn't intimidate you or anything. Crawfish etouffee, definitely. My, I have a girlfriend from, from the area and she always prepared for me like crawfish etouffee, so that's probably my favorite right now. Goals for the rest of this year? Goals for the rest of the year? Um, I'm going to try to get ranked. That's a big goal I had since I got here. Let's see how it's going to be. Um, I think this this uh, LSU game probably is going to help me. We have all Americans coming next weekend. Let's see how we do. So basically, that's it. Good luck to you. We're at the Sonic America's Drive-In with Elio Lago of the Raging Cajun Tennis Team. Tonight, we as the uh, Student Engagement and Leadership Team in the Dean of Students Office, we're educating our student leaders and the student organization advisors about hazing, uh, why we don't tolerate hazing, what the new laws are, what our policies, what are good ways to educate their student organization members and our students about the dangers of hazing. We had a conversation about um, the goals and expectations that our office and our institution has set to educate our students on Louisiana law in regards to hazing, getting them acclimated to what we are doing moving forward and giving them the opportunity to discuss um, some of the things and initiatives that we're looking to give them and giving them the power to make those decisions. We all know the big things um, that are involved with hazing, alcohol related, um, anything that's violent, the obvious reasons, but it's also really important to talk about the little things because something that they mentioned was that it is a snowball effect and the little things add up to something big. This event is so important because a lot of organizations and students don't really know what defines hazing. A lot of things that the, these organizations do, they might not consider hazing, but in the eyes of the law and the university, it will be considered hazing. And this event is just to stress the importance that hazing is not allowed at, in, in any organization and is illegal through the eyes of the law. It's definitely something that's affected our state. Uh, I mean, in Baton Rouge, there's stuff that happened last year. Even on our campus, there's things that have happened in the past that we need to get away from and prevent that going into the future. I think that it's smart that we educate our students here at UL. It makes a more um, unified community going forward to try to prevent hazing in the future. And just having those conversations and bringing more awareness to it as it's not always as obvious as we'd like to think that it is. So having those conversations with each other, with your members, um, and with the other Greek organizations really helps shed a new light on it that you don't always see and brings more awareness to it so we can ensure that everyone gets the best experience out of it. I think tonight was really good to begin those discussions to help, under students, help our students understand why and how. How we can as a community put an end to hazing and how we as a community can build a stronger, more engaged community by creating experiences that engage students rather than tearing them down. 
I think it went very well. I think they were able to express their opinions and we were able to give them the information that they needed. And I think that we're going to be able to move forward as a community knowing that we're going to all support one another. What it comes down to is that someone, well, more than one person is physically not here with us because of events from hazing. And uh, it just comes down to the point where it's time to be responsible and step up not only as leaders, but as human beings too, to put an end to this so that the, it does not happen anymore. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, if you're happy and you know it, nothing that will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, 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 with every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Pass over the middle, touchdown Louisiana. I'm head coach Billy Napier, and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. Just as hard as them. We working just as hard as them. If not harder. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to knock his head off. Let's go. Let's go. Remember what we said, man. One play at a time. One player at a time. Everybody hear me? One play at a time. One person at a time. All right. Let's lock arms. Get back to back and go fight our ass off. Everybody hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Here we go. Compete on three. One, two, three. Compete. compete. Tuscaloosa. There's the handoff to the outside. There's the cut, and it's in the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Tonga by Loa to the end zone. Touchdown. Play action. He's in trouble. Down he goes back at the 30. He'll get the carry, sweeps to the outside, and he'll walk it in. Touchdown, Alabama. I don't care about what just happened. All I care about is what's about to happen. One play at a time, one win at a time. You cannot forget 
the work you've invested and who you are. Does everybody understand that? Sir. Let's play to the intangibles of this football team. Everybody understand? Sir. Effort, toughness, discipline, <coughs> play for each other, and let's get it done. Everybody understand? Oh, so here we go. Team 03. One, two, three, team! team. Regis will get the carry, and he's pushing his way in, and he is in! Touchdown, Louisiana! And Regis to the outside, 45, down to the 40. He's over 100 yards for the game, and he's all the way down to the Alabama 35. Nunez going to throw for it, got a man open, and the pass is caught. Touchdown, Louisiana! And that will be the end of this football game. Bama now 5-0 on the year. The Cajuns drop to 1-3 on the season. Breaking you down on the first. Ready? Break down. Two. Go on. Two. football team this year that is one of the more talented and better Alabama football teams in the last six eight ten years Does everybody understand that I hope everybody understands that so what do you what is the lesson a good football team will expose your issues therefore we got exposed everybody hear me All right you got to learn those lessons I dream of a day where this place is slam packed and we got that type of football team Everybody understand that? That's what I dream of. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of you hadn't thought about this yet, but when I saw that Arkansas State Georgia Southern score, in my mind, that was like, I just won the lottery. Does everybody hear me? Because they basically, they said, all right, here you go. There's the pen. You get to write the story. Everybody got me? You get to, you get to basically pull out the pen, and you get to write your story this season. Our story was going to be written by somebody else as long before that happens. Everybody understand? We had, a, we had a loss in this conference. They lost. Now, who controls our destiny? We do. We do. The, the men standing right around in this circle, they decide. We faced adversity this year, and really, every time we've had an opportunity to do that, we've responded. That's what I'll give you credit for. I'll give you credit for your effort, your toughness and how you responded when you faced a difficult situation. That's what we've done. Have we executed at a high level? Have we played winning football? No. Everybody hear me? That's what we have not done. As your coach, do I believe that it's important that you care about and know the story of every player out here? Why do I believe in that? What I've observed with the game of football is that if the group knows each other, then it's harder for me to let that person down. It ought to hurt your soul to, for there to be video in that office of you not doing your job. It ought to hurt you. It's hard for me to live with the fact that I got a football team giving great effort, great toughness, right, that responds to adversity, but we can't get the technical part right. Everybody's got a boatload of excuses about why they can't get it done, why they can't have success, what's happened to them in the past, okay, but truth be known, we all control what we can do to improve our situation. Everybody understand that? Sure. So that's the challenge. That's where we're at as a football team. And remember what I said to you, man, because I firmly believe it. It's one person at a time, right? We control our own destiny this week. All right, we got an opportunity to go make it right this weekend. And I promise you, you just stack them on top of each other, one rep, one day, one win, all right? And we'll be where we want to be at the end.